And welcome back to the channel. I'm Brant Fowler and I'm ready to talk about only good comics. Now let's hit that intro. This time we're going to talk about a book from Cross Gen Comics called Meridian, Volume 1, collecting the first seven issues, one of the first of four titles that launched the company. Now before we get into today's video, if you do enjoy the content on this channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video going up on Only Good Comics. And give us a thumbs up because it really does help the channel out. And you can follow me across social media at Only Good Comics. Now, let's get back to today's video. Now if you're not familiar with Cross Gen Comics, they were a popular comic book company in the early 2000s that were trying to compete on the level of a Marvel or DC. They were launched by a very rich person who surrounded himself with a bunch of creative talents like Mark Wade and um, Butch Geis and Barbara Kiesel and Joshua Middleton and uh, Bart Sears and a whole a plethora of popular creators at the time that all moved to Florida and worked in an office, an actual bullpen, if you will, together for a time. Unfortunately, the company saw its demise quite early as they tried to do way too much too fast, started losing money, and ended up selling the assets of the company ultimately to Disney, who bought it mainly for this book right here because they had intended to make an animated feature about Meridian. That is kind of the history of CrossGen. It is a company that got me back into comics when I had not read comics for about five years and I started hearing uh, talk about CrossGen books and it got me excited as a fantasy fan to get back into the world of comics and ultimately CrossGen is what brought me back into comics and has me here today doing this and creating my own comics which honestly are heavily inspired by some of the works from CrossGen including Meridian. So like I said Meridian was one of the first four titles that launched with uh, CrossGen, that it was one of their first four offerings. And if you don't know much about CrossGen as far as their world and, and the stories that they were telling, it involved a mark called a sigil. And I thought there'd be a, like a little image of it. I'll try to find a better picture to show, but it's in the logo right there. Um, and I'll, I'll pop that up like right here. And uh, this sigil was given to random people on different planets uh, to kind of balance the power that was leading up to a major storyline that ultimately kind of fell a little bit short. I'll talk more about that later on. But the concept was really cool because it was usually coming of age characters that didn't understand what these abilities were and they were coming into their own and, and it was changing the course of their life these trajectories that they were each on and then all of a sudden the, they had these abilities that took them off in different directions and gave them uh, a higher purpose in some cases and uh, some a lower purpose <laughs> because on some worlds those marks were given to villains and in this world the sigil was actually given to two characters siblings a two brothers and one of them was our main character's father and very early on in the first issue, her father is murdered. And the sigil mysteriously and miraculously passes to our main character, 16 year old girl, Sifi. Sifi uh, lives on an island, a floating island. Um, this is Sifi, um, a floating island called Meridian. And there was already a cataclysmic event in her world, Demetria, that caused a bunch of these floating islands and flying ships. And you can see kind of a picture there of like these uh, pods that are powering, they're keeping these islands afloat. So a lot of them live in these, I think they're called uh, sun cities or something close to that. And uh, there's a good picture of her with the sigil, which, sorry get it in frame is actually on her forehead um, and her power was basically to give things life um, she could bring things back from withering and, and 
create them and the counter sigil did the exact opposite and destroyed things and we quickly find out that um as her father had the sigil and we learned in the like the very couple, first couple of pages of issue one that um the two siblings were her father and obviously if it was siblings it would be her uncle and he had the other sigil and he was not such a nice guy and like i said he had this destructive power and he was a rich guy a powerful guy and so there's mystery implanted because neither one of them know that the other has a sigil because both of them keep them hid and um so it's a it becomes a political strug struggle because Sifi is supposed to inherit meridian and, and um she she's like the sole uh benefactor of that estate and to lead the the, the next generation of the island and uh her uncle ilan wants control of the island he wants control of all demetria and so they are at odds immediately and he kind of brings her under his wing to kind of keep his enemy close and ultimately throughout the course of the series we see Sifi having to grow up fast and take charge and fight against these powers that are trying to take over and politically corrupt her beloved land and that's kind of her whole thing and honestly my character the last ember was heavily influenced by this book by meridian by the character of Sifi, it's why Ember is a teenage girl coming of age, getting this power that comes to her, uh, unbeknownst to her why or, or how or how she controls it. It's very similar beginnings that completely changes after those little touchstones. Uh, but this character in this book heavily influenced the creation of Ember. And so it holds a, a dear place in my heart. And like all Crossgen titles, unfortunately, this series ended abruptly, but it, it was long running. I think it was 30 something issues, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that this one ran. Uh, this trade collects the first seven, actually seven and a half. There's like a, a 0.5 story um, in this as well. And there's an issue of Crossgen Chronicles that uh, is about CP2. So there's actually like eight issues worth of content in this trade. And so if you can find this, I, I'm sure um, you can find this in the bins somewhere since CrossGen kind of no longer exists, but Marvel did just recently put out that CrossGen, um, I forget what it was, a sampler or something? It had like the first four issues of, uh, or the it had four number one issues of different series, Mystic, Sigil, Roos, and uh, Sojourn, I believe, which uh, were other great titles that I loved from CrossGen all in different genres, all taking place on different planets, but all involving sigil bearers. And ultimately it became like this big battle of the sigil bearers and, and this whole thing that got very rushed at the end because the company was uh, going out of business and, and the money was running out. And so they kind of had to compress what should have been about two more years worth of story, I would guess, into this very abrupt finale for everything. So, um, I don't remember, honestly, because it's been a long time since I've read the entire series, if Meridian ended solidly, but the portion that I do remember that this story was really well written. It's written by Barbara Kiesel with art by Joshua uh, Middleton, uh, Steve McNiven, Dexter Vines, uh, colorist Michael Adia, and Dave Lanfear with lettering. Uh, so it's a superstar team that worked on this book, and you can just see some of the art. is just It's gorgeous and breathtaking art. And the storytelling is beautiful. Uh, the pacing is brilliant. It's like a fantastic read with like inner monologue narration by Sifi throughout. But uh, like I said, there's a lot of subterfuge. There's a lot of uh, political uh, influence. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of action. And you got sky pirates and, and fighting in the sky. And Sifi can fly at some point. And then there's the destructive and the rebirthing powers at war with each other. And there's points in the story where Sifi explores different parts of her world because she has to leave uh, Meridian to go kind of fight in this in this battle. And she goes kind of undercover 
in these uh, lower towns that are down on the surface and, and she learns that it's not all what she thought it was and that people down there are struggling a lot more than the people in the Sun Cities and, and it kind of gives her a different um, perspective on life in general and it kind of influences the direction that she heads and, and the cause that she takes up throughout the story so it is beautiful storytelling and if you would like to try a cross gen book I think this one is one of the most accessible ones that they have because it's got a little something for fans of uh, books that have just a little bit of superheroics, but also it, there's stuff, stuff for like um, genre fans, like fantasy fans, like fans of pirate stories and that kind of thing, fans of uh, um, kind of boiling it down. It, it's more, it's not quite as all ages as that, but like a, a cartoon like Tailspin where you had like the planes and the, you know, uh, kick cloud kicker surfing behind the plane. It has kind of those vibes. It's a little bit fantastical, but it's it's also, uh, even though there's sun cities, cities in the sky, it's very down to earth and grounded in certain points, but it's got the whole, um, what do you call it? Uh, societal differences the economic struggles between different classes of people it's got all of that it's got uh really great banter between uh young and old characters it's got something for everyone i think you can pick this up at any level of your reading or any level or any genre that you enjoy and kind of find something to latch onto in this book and it's why it's one of my favorite books from cross gen and something that i hope in the future, Marvel decides to do something with, since they do have publishing rights or Disney, maybe eventually they they dust this off and, and do an animated feature because it would make a really good one in, in the style of like a Treasure Planet. Um, I, I think this would be a really strong story in any form that you would put it on. There she is kind of taking the reins of one of the sky ships. Um, it's just, it's a brilliant book and I wish that there was, there could have been more of this, and uh, I don't know. CrossGen has a near and dear place in my heart because it brought me back into comics, because it inspired the stories that I tell today, and because it's just really brilliant creation in between these two covers right here. So, if you want to check out a CrossGen book, if you want something different, if you want something that is kind of a, in my opinion, a new classic, even though it'll never get that notoriety because of the way Cross Gen ended. Um, but top level professional work here by people that became better known for other stuff later on. Uh, definitely check out Meridian from Cross Gen. And occasionally I'm gonna throw in another one of these Cross Gen uh, books because I have entire runs of most of the Cross Gen titles. Uh, like I said, I fell in love with that company, so. There you go, Meridian from CrossGen, check it out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me a comment, hit that notification bell, do all that stuff, follow me across social media, at Only Good Comics, and join me next time as I talk about more Only Good Comics. Take care.